All right, class. So we are going to uh, go ahead and actually start like writing a speech. I'm going to show you the uh, process of bringing everything that we've talked about so far uh, together. So right now I've got open a blank uh, document and I want to be truly random with what it is that we pick. So let's just go tell me something random. There we go. Uh, okay. How about just random word? There we go. Random word generator, sure. All right, create random word. Imagine. I was kind of hoping for a noun. Imagine is a little bit, oh, attitude. Support, arch. Okay, let's do arch. Arch sounds good. Okay, so we're gonna do an informative speech. We talked about last time about the different kind of uh, kinds of outlines that we can have. So let's do our propositional uh, statement. The purpose, and we'll do informative. Like I said, the purpose of my speech is to inform my audience. Now let's figure out what kind of an outline we want to do. What how, what do we want to say about arches? We could do chronological. That would be history of arches. We could do spatial. That would maybe be. It would either be the different components of an arch, or maybe it would be what arches look like in different parts of the world. We could do causal, which is like why people have arches, like or, or why uh, you know arches work, or how it is that they operate. Or we could do topical, which is just sort of a mishmash of the three. Now, topical is the one that's always the first one that 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 presents itself. But maybe we don't want to do that. Maybe what we want to do is I'm leaning spatial to inform my audience about great arches in the world. Okay, that's, uh, no, let's, let's make it even more spatial sounding. In various places in the world. So literally, that's, that is, in fact, how I start to explore a topic is I just think through the different uh, outline types that are available to me for uh, the purpose of the speech, and then think about what the speech would sound like with each of them. Now, am I going to stick with this? Propositional statements can be mauled. You know, they can be they can be mutated. Let's start with this. This gives us some introduction. Uh, this um, direction uh, first. Let's assume I've done the audience analysis, which I kind of have. I'm going to be talking to college students about this, right? And college students are going to be. You know, it's going to be tough to uh, convince them that arches uh, matter. So, what kind of an audience am I talking about? Probably an apathetic audience, in point of fact, because you know they're going to say. Why is it that arches matter? And this is going to be college students, right? They're gonna college students are gonna care about things like beauty, right? Art, majesty, right? They're gonna care about money and success. Maybe how to communicate uh, that you have these things, right? Because I hate to say it, but you know, college students. One of the big things that you guys have in common is that you're all broke, and uh, I mean that's the the nature of the beast. So uh, uh, communicating something about money might be good. Okay, so we've got some uh, uh, little audience analysis stuff that we've dropped in there for ideas of things that we might want to pursue. The briefest of audience analyses there. Okay, and now I will write my skeletal outline. I'm gonna go uh, intro. I always throw in a section called background just in case. Then, uh, because we know that we're going a uh, with a spatial background, uh, a spatial outline, I'm going to go place one, place two, place three, and then we'll end with conclusion. I know we haven't talked about conclusions too much re uh, lately. Just to give you a little heads up, conclusions should kind of be like the high point of the speech. I'm going to review what you've talked about. You want to give it some particular closing theme. We'll talk about that uh, in the uh, next video for this week. And then you want to end with a long sentence or a long sentence, short sentence, okay? 
That means uh, you use a long sentence uh, if you want to build tension. You and you go a long sentence, short sentence if you want to do a mic drop. Either one of them is uh, just fine. Okay, so now we've got the uh, the basics of the skeletal, but we can expand it even more because there are some things that we know we're going to need. Just like we talked about last time, uh, or the time before last, we need a hook for our introduction. You, the people only give you about 1.3 seconds to uh, when they make a decision uh, about whether or not they're going to listen to you. So we're definitely going to need a hook. We're going to need to have a section where we uh, 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 tell me what you're gonna tell me and then preview the speech okay now previewing the speech is basically uh going to be just telling me what regions of the world we're going to be looking at uh for arches right i don't know about what we need for background maybe history maybe a little bit of that for place one we're going to want to talk. Uh, uh, we're going to need a transition. We're going to uh, to finish things off. We're going to need an opening, and we'll need that for each of them. All right, let's start looking. All right, now I hap I guess I know off the top of my head that arches in uh, Greece were a big deal. Now maybe I want to write history of the arch. There we go. Now, I love starting in Wikipedia when I don't know anything about the topic, right? It'll give me a little bit of an overview as to how people think about it. Wikipedia is very, very useful. And then I will typically just take a glance through, oh, there's different kinds of arches that I didn't know about. Uh, hmm. I don't know if this is interesting enough, but it is kind of cool. Okay, Bronze Age arches in Persia. And when we look down at the bottom, we can see that there's lots of really good sources for uh, arches down here. There's another trick that you can do that will help you out very much with uh, with getting great sources. Okay, so let's go to scholar.google.com. Okay, and we're going to type in. Let's look back here. Okay, so Bronze Age, Near East in the Levant arches okay let's just start with let's start broad let's go bronze yes i've i've uh i've uh, definitely uh vanity googled myself on google scholar uh bronze age arches let's see what we got do, 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 do. arches of radii corridors of power reflections on current archaeological practice that sounds interesting the three arched middle bronze uh, age gate at Tel Don A, structural investigation of an extraordinary archaeological site. That's interesting. I wonder if we can find a picture for that really quickly. Let's just grab that. Boop, boop, boop. Images. All right. And there we go. We do have images of it. All right. Oh, there and there's the three arches like they talked about. Excellent. Okay, so this will be a good visual aid for us. I'll go ahead and go back to my outline. Let's just say, let's just start messing with it. Let's do, let's call the, I don't want to call it Bronze Age, though. Where is this? Tell Don. Where is Tell Don? A tell is like, okay, Israel. Okay, so let's do Middle East. How about that? So place one will be the Middle East, okay? And already something that we're kind of seeing from what we've been looking at is uh, uh, some of the oldest arches in the world are in the Middle East. Uh, now that's going to need a site, but when I'm just racing along and not doing, and uh, uh, just putting everything together, just getting my outline together, if I need to cite something uh, in the future, I will just write in big capital letters, cite, and I will come back to support it later. But we saw already that, uh, you know, Bronze Age uh, arches 
were in the uh, uh, middle uh, in the uh, uh, Near East, the Middle East. So we see 3800 BC, we can click on 19. Right here, we've got the source for that from the American Journal of Archaeology. I personally will almost always uh, make sure, uh, the best way to make sure that you've not only uh, got a legitimate source, but that you've also cited it correctly, is to punch it into Google Scholar. There it is, and then you can go cite. For myself, I always use APA. I know MLA is humanities standard, but I'm a communication scientist, so uh, APA is mine. And then I can just take that and I can copy it. And if I'm writing a paper in particular, I can just come back here, boop, 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 drop it in, okay? Boop, boop, boop. And let's, ooh, is this searchable? Yep, there we go. Blueprints and surroundings. Prove that the true keystone arch and is older than time of Sargon of Agane. Right, there we go. Okay, so we have just we have just checked. We have made sure that we've got support for the information that we have just uh, uh, that we have just dropped in. And actually, I'll write that in. Then we'll go uh, Peters. 1895. There we go. All done. Uh, now, like I said, usually I'll wait until the end and I'll go back to everything that's got sight uh, inside of it and uh, and just fill them in. I usually won't go through this rigmarole first because I'm not even sure that these points are going to survive. I'm just dropping in research as fast as I possibly can find it, right? So some of the oldest arches are in the Middle East. Let's write in that tell... Don uh, triple arch. I'm gonna be curious what makes this arch special. Okay, that'll work. Uh, and so we'll do some homework on that in a little bit. Then I'm gonna say at least one more arch. One more arch. Maybe let's just take a peek. What is Wikipedia telling us? It didn't bring up the Teldon arch, but you can see how we got to it, right? So let's see. An example of the latter would be the Dnieper arch. Well, that's kind of, okay. The Dnieper arch. Boo, boo, boo. Okay. Sure, why not? The Dnieper arch. What makes this arch special? Right. What I would really like to do, if I can find it, is it would be good to have a story about the discovery of this arch or some such. Okay, these these need some examples, I think, uh, in order to in order to set them out. Right, and also I do talk about oldest arches. I wonder what happens. Let's just see. What is the oldest arch in uh, in the world? There we go. The Etruscan gate, uh, Etruscan gate at Volterra, is considered the first example of a true arch. Okay, Etruscan gate at Volterra. Okay, there we go. The Porta Alarco Etruscan Gateway. In Italy. Okay. Into Europe. Too broad? Might be. Uh, we might want to do Greece and Europe and Italy, right? Actually, I think that's uh, is what I would like to do. Let's do that. So we'll go Greece, because I think theirs are, are going to be older. Place three can be Italy. Boop, boop, boop. All right. And we're going to go right here, and we're going to say uh, Etruscan Gate at Volterra, oldest example of an arch site. There we go. And we're going to write, oh, definitely we need an image. And here we're going to need an image. So literally as I'm going through and writing out my uh, speech, this is all that I'm doing. I'm uh, dropping in 
uh, information as I get it. Just really quickly, what are some famous Greek arches? Uh, two principal orders are an archaic and classical Greek, Doric and Ionic. Okay. Um, what is an example of a Doric arch in Greece? The Parthenon. Oh, that's for columns, though. Hmm, <laughs> Let's try again. Famous Greek arches. Hey, now we're talking. What is this? That's very pretty. So, Adrian Temple in Ephesus. The Temple of Hadrian. Here it is. So that's Turkey. So maybe that should go over here in Middle East. So Temple of Hadrian, if we like it. Image. Now this one actually might work well because I've actually been to Ephesus. And so this one maybe allows me to tell a personal story. I thought it looked familiar. All right, so I can lose that. What is that? Oh, that's Temple of Hadrian again. All right. Boop, boop, boop. Arches in Greece. Arch of Hadrian in Athens, Attica, a triumphal arch. That's interesting. Okay, sure, why not? Let's drop in uh, that over here for Gre So now I'm starting to think I'm only finding a couple of things. Arches in Greece. For Greece. So maybe I overestimated how much the Greeks ended up doing with arches. Looks like I did. So let's use, let's go back and maybe we do, let's just see what happens if we go Greece and Italy. Okay, so we'll combine those two. Now that leaves us with a, oops, let's go the other way actually. Oop. Let's, uh, now that leaves us with one blank uh, blank section here. So we've got Middle East, we've got Greece, Italy and Greece. So we could do Africa. We could do the United States. Let's do the United States because we have some great arches here. But let's, this is why it's helpful to leave things in outline form because then I can just move it down here. And... Uh, it's easy to move things around. Excellent. Okay, so I'll take that. Because obviously in the United States, we've got uh, the uh, St. Louis Arch, right? So that's definitely something worth thinking about. What makes this arch special? Why does this arch exist in the first place? Right? So there's all sorts of good questions that we should be able to ask about the St. Louis Arch. And in fact, we probably could do the entire speech just about the uh, St. Louis Arch, but we're not going to bother with that. So let's see, Etruscan Gate at Volterra, the, uh, then what was the other one we just had? The Arch of Hadrian in Athens. Okay, let's go ahead and we'll go there. Arch of Hadrian in Athens. I think I might, well, no, because this one's older, okay? So uh, probably starting inside of, even though this is a spatial outline, starting with something older maybe makes more sense, and certainly that does here. Let's pick one more for the United States, okay? 
Let's see. Famous arches in the United States. Obviously, it's going to do the St. Louis one. But, oh, those are natural arches. Oh, that's something I hadn't even thought about. We've been doing arches that are uh, man-made and talking about that. But this might actually be an interesting thing to conclude with. It might be fun. Let's drop it in. So let's go with... Uh, Let's go here and let's talk about natural arches. Maybe since we are at a Lutheran school, and I know that that's going to be something that's reasonably uh, a common interest for people, I could say that, uh, you know, I could talk about uh, human beings aren't the only ones to carve arches. God created nature in such a fashion. As to create some incredible arches. Many of, the, many of these natural, of these, let's make amazing natural monuments are here in the United States. Okay, yeah, that might be an interesting thing. Maybe, maybe that is, in fact, what we want to do. Maybe Arches National Park uh, would be something to talk about here. Okay, so anyway, like literally this is how I write speeches. And you can see now we've actually got a huge amount of stuff that we can just do. I haven't actually, I, now coming into today, you guys saw me clicking on the random, uh, uh, the random topic generator. I don't know anything about arches. I don't know a single thing about arches. I don't know that, you know, coming into, I'm not an, arch, uh, an arch, uh, archeologist or an architect or anyone who would have any background knowledge about this. And already we've got like a, more than a page of information that uh, we are going to build out into a speech. Now it's pretty simple, right? Now I just look up a couple of things about the Etrusti uh, Etruscan Gate of uh, Volterra. What makes it interesting? Why is it special, right? Tell a story about it if I can. Maybe give a stat. It's the oldest example of an arch, right? Uh, and we'll talk about uh, supporting ideas and how we use those to build out in just a bit. But this is literally uh, how I go through making a skeletal outline and generating the ideas I need. You don't actually need to have a creative or intelligent thought in your head. You're just going through and dropping in uh, examples, citing them as you go or putting in sight so that you can uh, cite them later. And gradually it builds out. Okay, I'm going to cut it right here. Then we're going to talk about uh, uh, research. And uh, I'll show you some stuff about how to do that. I'll see you in just a moment. How do I stop? You've got to be kidding me. Has that not been recording? Oh, good. No, it has been.